A ship is like a home that moves on the water. But just like normal homes, sometimes ships get abandoned. They either meet with misfortune and can't be salvaged, or they're no longer fit for purpose, leaving us with just the shell of their former magnificence. The French aircraft carrier Clemenceau R-98 was once the pride of the French Navy, serving as only their sixth aircraft carrier. Built in the early 1960s, it represented the pinnacle of French engineering at the time it launched, comparable to the finest equivalent ships of Great Britain and the United States. Le Clem, as it was known to those who sailed on it, served as France's protector for almost four decades before reaching the end of its useful life in 1997. It was sent to India to be scrapped, but concerns about pollution caused by breaking the ship up saw it held up by the Indian authorities and briefly stolen by activists before it was finally accepted for disposal by the British, who deconstructed it in Hartlepool in 2010. The MV Kalakala had a varied and exciting life. She was the luxury fairy of the future when she launched in 1935, charming and delighting passengers who had never seen a ship of this standard before. She was still a tourist attraction 30 years later when she was moored in Seattle, with only the city's Space Needle being better known as a landmark in the area. Louis Proctor of the Boeing Company, better known for making planes, was responsible for the ship's unusual Art Deco design, with a flying bridge section designed to resemble wings. At her peak, she hosted a full live orchestra and dance hall within her 276-foot frame. Unfortunately, her unique design caused issues that compromised her integrity, such as poorly aligned engines causing shaking damage during operations. Her condition degraded over time, and eventually, she was beached in Kodiak in 1970 to become a shrimp processing unit. What remained of her was finally disposed of in 2015. SS America was once known as the most stylish and beautiful ship ever to fly the American flag. Initially intended for wartime service, under the name USS West Point, the massive ship started life as a troop transport vehicle, but was reimagined as a luxury cruise liner after the end of hostilities. She sailed between New York and Europe, with the elegant staterooms of her interior providing comfort and luxury to her wealthy guests. By the 1980s, her age was showing, and she was almost sold for scrap, but Thai investors had plans to convert her into a waterbound five-star hotel. They paid for her to be brought to Phuket, but she ran aground near Fuerteventura in a storm, with the tide breaking her in half. Over the course of the next 20 years, she slowly slipped below the waves. Once upon a time, NATO commanders lived in fear of ships like the mighty Soviet cruiser Murmansk, but that before it became a rusted shell embedded in the fjords of Norway. Murmansk was a Sverdlov-class cruiser, one of many that were proposed for construction during diplomatic tensions during the Cold War, with what were, for the time, advanced anti-aircraft capabilities. Missile technology advanced faster than had been anticipated, though, and the Sverdlovs became obsolete long before their time. The Murmansk was sold for scrap, but her tow lines broke as she was being towed to a breaker's yard, and she became wedged in a fjord. The rusting heap became ugly and toxic, polluting the waters as it broke down, so an artificial dam was built around it while it was taken apart piece by piece. Now, nothing remains. The Swedes were responsible for the construction of the MV Cherry Venture, but she spent most of her life on the beach in Australia. That might sound like fun for a person, but not so much for a massive cargo ship. The Cherry Venture ran aground on Tiwa Beach in Queensland in 1973. Due to a combination of high winds and poor planning, the ship wasn't carrying enough cargo, which left it sitting too high in the water and prone to drifting. Various attempts to refloat the vessel followed throughout the next 20 years, but none succeeded. Eventually, in 2007, it was decided it was too dangerous to leave the ship where it was any longer because asbestos in the engine had become exposed, and so it was demolished and then buried. 
Liberia's World Discoverer is a shipwreck you can still go and visit today in a scenic bay near the Solomon Islands. Just don't expect her to be looking her best. She's been there since April 2000, and time hasn't been kind to her. The Germans built the luxury cruise ship in 1974, and it sailed the world happily for a quarter of a century before it struck an unknown reef formation near the islands and got stuck. This was especially sad, as she'd undergone a full refurbishment in 1996 to make her look as good as new. When the ship struck the reef and was severely damaged, the captain heroically managed to steer her into the bay, where all passengers escaped safely. Locals then jumped on board and looted anything of value, making the cost of rescuing the world discoverer too high to be worth the trouble. When the Arctic Discoverer was first commissioned as a Canadian research vessel called the A.T. Cameron in 1958, the builders could never have known it would play such a remarkable role in history. A sturdy and robust vessel, she was given the name we know her by best in 1988, when she was being used by notorious con artist and marine engineer Tommy Thompson. Thompson was convinced that he'd found the wreck of the SS Central America, a cargo ship that sank in 1857 while laden with gold from the California Gold Rush. Thompson was right about his discovery, but he didn't want to share it with the people he'd promised to pay. He salvaged millions of dollars worth of gold from the sea floor and then disappeared with it, abandoning the Arctic discoverer in the process. He was eventually found in 2015, but claimed to no longer possess any gold. The Arctic discoverer languished in Florida until it was sold in 2013 to Breakers, who dismantled it a piece at a time. The final emperor of France, Napoleon III, probably had other ideas for his former naval harbor when he commissioned it to be built, but it ended up as the final resting place for a whole host of unwanted, rusting merchant and military vessels. This unorthodox sea cemetery contains a full-sized cruiser, as well as many smaller ships, all of which are periodically used as target practice by the French military. They've taken quite a battering over time, and one by one, they're sinking below the waves. Before long, they'll all be gone forever. Chittagong Ship Breaking Yard is the largest in the world, dealing with a fifth of all the world's shipbreaking work, and employs over 200,000 people in Bangladesh. It all started with one ship in 1960. The Greek vessel MD Alpine became stranded in Chittagong after a heavy storm, and couldn't be rescued or salvaged. Chittagong Steelhouse bought the stricken ship in 1965 and set about scrapping it. The work proved profitable, and a whole new Bangladeshi industry was born. More than 40 different teams operate in the area of the yard, which became a tourist attraction until the government stopped letting outsiders get too close to it because of the dangerous conditions inside. Friendly sounds like a strange name for a former battleship, but that's the title that was given to this former Soviet guard ship which was commissioned and constructed in 1973. From 1975 onward, Friendly was part of the Baltic fleet, cruising around Europe and keeping the peace. The well-traveled and reliable vessel had more than earned its retirement by the time 2003 came, with the Russian Navy selling her at scrap price to private investors. The investors wanted to turn her into a museum, or possibly even an exclusive nightclub with permanent moorings in Moscow, but sadly, their plans fell through. Friendly spent 13 years on the Kim Ki Reservoir while attempts were made to sell it again. And during that time, vandals and looters targeted her repeatedly, damaging the hull in the process. Sinking and beyond salvation, Friendly was cut into scrap metal and disposed of in April 2016. Building a huge ship out of concrete doesn't sound like a great idea. And it didn't turn out too well in practice either, but you have to admire the Chinese for giving it a try. China experimented with concrete ships in the 1970s, when there was a shortage of steel in the country. And the result was the Gutian. She measured 345 feet in length and was the largest concrete ship ever built when she was launched in 1973. But barely a year later, she had been abandoned on a riverbank after operating costs proved to be too high to be practical. The government had no further use for her, but tourists loved her. She was a popular site for photographers for the 40 years she remained there, 
and some people even lived inside her briefly. On the Namibian coast, 1,300 feet from the shorelines of the Atlantic Ocean, rests the slowly rusting wreck of the Edward Bolin, exposed to the elements. The story of the Edward Bolin starts in Germany in October 1890, when she launched from Hamburg as a trading vessel and became the first steam-powered ship to transport mail between Germany and West Africa. She was used for a variety of trade and cargo missions for the bulk of her 19 years of service, and she was laden with equipment to assist diamond mining activities near Conception Bay when she met with her fate. With her crew confused by unseasonal fog, she ran aground on a sandbank on the 5th of September 1909. Her crew was unharmed, and all the cargo was unloaded, but the ship was stuck fast and couldn't be towed to safety. The IX-529, better known as the Sea Shadow, was a top-secret U.S. defense project. The idea was to take the technology that had been successful on stealth jets like the F-117 Nighthawk and apply it to seafaring vehicles. The idea never quite caught on. Sea Shadow sailed out of California on a classified mission in 1984. Geared for automated operations with a skeleton crew on board, it continued to sail in secret throughout the Cold War, with its existence only becoming public knowledge in 1993 when it was effectively retired. Only one model of this ship was ever built, and it was considered to be a failed prototype. Multiple attempts to sell the vessel failed, resulting in it sitting at the San Diego Naval Station until 2006, finally being scrapped in 2012. You can tell that the SS Airfield was built to last, even now when it's over a century old and weighed down with trees which have grown into its abandoned frame, it somehow stays afloat. The SS Airfield is a permanent resident of Homebush Bay in Australia, where it ended a life that started in 1911 in Great Britain. She was a coal-carrying steam-powered ship that worked hard for over 50 years, including as an auxiliary troop support ship during the global conflict in the 1940s. She survived that period and continued to deliver coal until 1972, when the time finally came for her to retire. Usually, boats sent to Homebush Bay are to be scrapped, but Airfield was kept as a display vessel. Her unintended onboard forest has become a tourist attraction. Even in this sorry state, you can tell just by looking at the Al Mansur, which translates as the victor, was once a proud and opulent vessel. That's no surprise. It was built for $30 million and belonged to former Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. The Al Mansur was the pride of Hussein's fleet, 400 feet long and containing incredible riches within. Even the taps were gold plated. Hussein was paranoid. He had a secret escape tunnel built into the boat, which would have taken him directly to a submarine launch pod in an emergency. A U.S. bombing raid badly damaged the boat during 2003, and although it didn't sink, it was beyond salvage. Al Mansur was towed to Barsa to be scrapped in 2005. It may have been called the victor, but it lost in the end. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.